So, like I told you, last time we started looking at a phenomena which gives us an opportunity to see how what we know or what we have learnt as theoretical apparatus to understand language helps us understand our languages. I gave you some examples from Hindi and then I want you to evaluate this phenomena with reference to languages that you speak to. Okay? We looked at, uh, then we talked about negation, right? negation words, we discussed what negation is, uh, whether negation is a lexical item or a functional category and then we looked at how is it represented in the clause structure of a sentence that is what is its exact location in the functional domain of the conceptual representation of a sentence. Right? Now we want to extend that and see little bit more about negation. And how it intersects with other lexical categories. Now that we know negation is part of lexic, part of functional domain, right? And then how it works in the language with other lexical categories. Okay? Uh, there is a particular thing in natural language which is called negative polarity item. Okay? Like we talked about negation, that negation is a universal phenomena in natural language. Negation may be a matter of discussion in linguistic theory in the following way, whether negation is a word or a suffix or a prefix, whether negation conceptually belongs to functional domain or lexical domain. These are the questions that one can discuss while talking about linguistic theory. However, the presence of negation in natural language is a universal phenomenon. Similarly, the presence of negative polarity item in natural language is a universal phenomenon. I am going to show you some examples and then you will be able to evaluate whether or not we find such elements in other languages or not, that is other languages that you speak. And I can substantiate that it is available not only in the languages that you speak, but in all the languages of the world. So as you can see, the word indicates negative polarity item. So it is going to be a word which is sensitive to negation. That is all negative polarity item means. It is a word in a language. It is sensitive to negative polar sensitive to a negative element. That is all is the point. Uh, what exactly it means? We are, we are going to look at this. So, we you have seen three negation markers in Hindi. How many negation markers are there in Telugu? More than three, sir, actually. You have not thought about that. No, did not look at it. There are more than three. More than three? Yes. There are definitely three of them? Definitely. For sure? Yeah. Can you tell me? Kottu, Kadu, Ledu. So, give, give an example of Kottu. Kottu. Uh, penne ikkada pettoddu. Which means? Lo loudly, loudly. Speak loudly. Penne ikkada pettoddu. Which means? Do not put the pen here. Okay. All right. The second one. Kal. Uh, Adi phone kal. That is not a phone. Okay. So, so these are the two negation markers like 
मत एंड नहीं मत एंड नहीं राइट व्हाट्स द थर्ड वन व्हिच मींस यूजुअली यूज्ड इन द मीनिंग लाइक इट्स नॉट देयर बट इट इज आल्सो समटाइम्स यूज्ड एज अ रिप्लेसमेंट फॉर इट इज मोर लाइक ना ना या यूज्ड एज अ रिप्लेसमेंट फॉर कादू Sometimes. So the first one that you said is that only restricted to imperative sentences like don't, don't speak, sit down, things like that, right? So without looking at more data, one can also say that at least for South Asian languages, we have a distinction between two negative markers at least, where. every language is going to have a specific negation for imperative sentences okay which can be used in negation which can be used to negate an imperative sentence which is a tenseless sentence right and then the other negation marker can be used in both types of sentences right that's true in telugu as well now see the see the see the structure of language around these phenomena right there may be hundreds of differences between hindi and telugu right so much so that the two languages are not intelligible but when it comes to classification of a negation word it works exactly the way hindi works you see that right uh okay so likewise i want you to think about other languages if you happen to speak them okay now uh, we saw this the phenomena that just we discussed with reference to telugu how it works in hindi then we have questioned the presence of negation in the in the structure of a sentence and we saw we saw with examples last time that negation happens to occur in the functional domain and specifically below tense and above aspect phrase okay so that's so which now also pay attention to the following that it's not just a matter of a specific location of negation it's also a matter of breaking the adjacency requirement between negate between tense and aspect okay and what's the implication of this breaking adjacency between tense and aspect the implication for that is these are categorically two different phenomena okay two different things and there is no strict adjacency requirement between tense and aspect so when someone says things like mai pizza khata hu ta part of the verb khata and hum which is a tense marker they do not have to be together they happen to be together true but they don't have to be together there they, they that adjacency could be broken okay so so a look at negation and the evidence that we saw last time tells us way more than what we saw but we are not getting into too many details of that all right then let us see examples of negative polarity items okay i want you to i i want to come to this one in a moment i want you to look at these two sentences okay the sentence in hindi reads as राजीव हरगिज नहीं बोलेगा ओके राजीव हरगिज नहीं बोलेगा इट मीन्स राजीव विल नॉट स्पीक एट ऑल अंडर एनी सर्किम स्टेंसेस ओके नाउ वॉट आई एम वॉट आई एम ट्राइंग टू शो यू हियर इज द वर्ड हरगिज इज कॉल्ड ए नेगेटिव पोलैरिटी आइटम okay this word cannot occur in a, in this type of a sentence 
if there is no nahi. If we do not use nahi, then we cannot use hargis. See the point. Therefore, the second sentence, the next sentence is marked with a star and ungrammatical. Rajiv Hargiz Bolega is not a good sentence in Hindi. Okay? And the only reason why it is not good is because there is no negative marker. You put a negative marker, the sentence becomes good. See the point? The fact that the presence of Hargiz is only allowed, is only warranted in the presence of negation is the reason why we call this thing a negative polarity item. Okay? This can only be present in a sentence when there is a negative, negative marker. This is what these two sentences show you. You get this point? This happens in all the languages. And since I was going to draw your attention to South Asian languages, does it happen in Telugu? It does not have to be Hargis. The word could be anything else. Does it happen in Tamil? Malayalam. Sir, can you explain NPIs in English? At this time, I do not want to. Because I want you to look at, or I want you to be able to look at your language with examples from our own languages. So, what you are saying is this does not help so far, right? Is there a familiar word? Is there a familiar word, sir? Is there a? Familiar word, as in Hargis is not very familiar. No, that is fine. But you do not have to be familiar with Hargis. Look at the sentence, Rajiv will not speak at all. How do you say that in Telugu? Rajiv asal matladdu. Okay. Now, the, the negation, remove the negation word from here. Is the sentence good? There Not is good. No negation word as such. There is just a morphological. Whatever that is, remove that. Is the sentence good? No. So definitely, some word in this sentence is a negative polarity item. Not a specified word, but some. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. It it may not be a full word. True. It may be a small element somewhere. So, like negation, the negative polarity item also does not have to be a word. But there is an element of negative polarity item in this sentence because of which when you remove negation, the sentence in Telugu that you just said is ungrammatical. And it becomes clearer when you write the sentence properly. If I knew Telugu and if we had more time, I would ask one of you to do this on the board and can show you which one is negation and which one is negative polarity item. <coughs> Understand this? Right? In that sense, the word at all also has some negative polarity meaning in it. Because in English also, we cannot say Rajiv will speak at all. Can we say this sentence, Rajiv will speak at all? It does not mean much. It means properly, it means it receives an appropriate interpretation in the presence of a negative word, not when we say Rajiv will not speak at all. That word also is a negative polarity item to some extent. I will give you more examples of negative polarity items in English too, but right now take a look at this. Let us look at these two sentences. 
میں نے کچھ بھی نہیں کھایا وٹ ڈز دس سینٹینس مین آئی ڈڈ ناٹ ایٹ اینی تھنگ رائٹ ای کین ناٹ سے میں نے کچھ بھی کھایا اوکے ناؤ پلیز پے اٹینشن ٹو دیس سینٹینسز ویری کیئر فلی آن دا آن دا اسکرین آن دا نیکسٹ سینٹینس آئی ہیو اینٹ پٹ دا اسٹار مارک اوکے انلائک دا پریویس ون ڈی سی ہیئر آن دا سیکنڈ ون دیر از اے اسٹار مارک وٹ دا اسٹار مارک مینس is this sentence is not possible at all. What no star means that this sentence is possible, okay, but does not have the meaning that we want. Meaning, it mene kuch bhi khaya. It doesn't mean I did not eat anything. This sentence is good with some other meaning. If you raise the intonation, remember we have talked about questions and intonation. I have eaten Right? We, two of us or some of us went together to some party. Food was not good. <coughs> On our way back, we are, uh, we are discussing something. I have eaten anything. Means I did not eat anything. Right? It can also mean something. It, can, it definitely means something else. Many, it, mean, it could mean, I eat just something randomly. True. It's, it's ambiguous, but ambiguity is not what we want to focus on. You are right. It's ambiguous. But what it does not mean is, I did not eat anything. The word kuch bhi, which you see in the bold, okay, does not have the meaning of anything. This word receives the meaning of anything only when you have a negative item in this sentence. Read the first sentence carefully. Maine kuch bhi nahi khaya. Right? That sentence doesn't mean I ate something randomly. See this thing? So the, the negation word and this kuch bhi has some sort of dependency on one another for giving a particular kind of meaning. Is this, is this making sense to you? Right? Yeah. Uh, you have written E-M-P-H, emphasis, right? Emphatic marker. Uh, it means that we give the intonation on that part. No, no. It means the B that you see, B is an emphatic marker in Hindi. See, we, it, it, it can be used with many other words like ek bhi. When we say ek bhi, right? Uh, tum bhi means you too. Okay, so bhi is an emphatic marker, and when we look at the details of this composition, then people say and people claim that what gives negative polarity interpretation to kuch bhi is actually bhi. Because kuch as a word is a quantifier. Kuch means something, some. In the presence of negation, the same word some becomes nothing. Kuch means something, kuch nahi, nothing. But with bhi, it becomes anything. Maine kuch bhi nahi khaya means I did not eat anything. Get, get the point? So, in both, in these four examples, I am trying to show you that there are some elements like hargiz and kuch bhi, which are categorically dependent on negation for their interpretations for their appropriate interpretations. Makes, makes sense? Sir, uh, consider the sentence, a kuch bhi nahi khata hai. If we remove the negation word, a kuch bhi khata hai, it becomes. Both makes sense and both are opposite. That's right. 
So, so therefore, I am not putting a star mark there. So, the second sentence that you are giving, ye kuch bhi khata hai. we cannot say that this sentence is wrong, this sentence is not possible. The sentence is definitely possible, but not possible with the intended interpretation. In other words, we can say without negation, it has a different meaning. With negation, it has a different kind of meaning. So, if we focus on the meaning with negation, that meaning is negative polarity meaning. With negation, it seems like these, there is a dependency between these two words. Get the, get the point? Now, to elaborate this point a little bit more, I, I did not mean to bring in uh, this point at this stage. I was going to discuss this little later, but since you are bringing in, let me talk about this. Do you see, I have mentioned uh, on the top type 1 and type 2, do you see that? What that means is, this distinction that you see, right? that in one case we can put a star that is in the case of type 1 right and in the case of type 2 we are not able to put a star what does this mean it means that there could be two types of negative polarity item okay in one type of negative polarity items, the negative polarity item is strictly dependent on negation. Without negation, no interpretation, the sentence is out. In the second type, which is the one that, that on the screen right now, it is possible, the sentence is possible without negation but not the right interpretation. Okay? So, this we can say this is not very strict kind of situation, whereas the first type is very strict situation, you remove negation and everything is out, the meaning is out. Okay? So, this is the, th these are the two first, two points that we are making here. First point, there are some words, some elements in all the languages which are sensitive to the presence or absence of negative elements in a sentence. Okay? And the second point is, among the elements that are sensitive to negative marker in a sentence, some are strictly dependent on negation and some are not. Get the point? So, these are, this is the classification, introduction and classification of negative polarity item. Okay? Now, I, I want to take you to this place. Do you see that the list in the one, in one and two? Do you see that? The first list in one, there is a set of three, three things there, right? All three of them are elements which are strictly dependent on negation. Okay? Now, I want an example from you. I have already given you an example of Hargis. Have you heard this phrase in English, in Hindi, ek phuti kori? No. Can you give me a sentence with that? Can you use this ek phuti kori? It means a broken penny. Literally, it means phuti, you, you know phutna means break. Phuti kori, kori is the word for, a, a colloquial word for penny. Right, which, which together means a broken penny. Literally, it means a broken egg, a footy, broken kauri. Has anyone seen a kauri? It is like a 
shell. It's, it's, it's a sea animal, small sea insect, which is, have you seen a sea shell, right? So, it's, it's the smallest part of that and when it is broken, it's of no use. So, the same metaphor is used for no money, not even a broken penny. Ek phuti kori. Now, can you, with, with this much of explanation, can you use this in a sentence? You, see, you, under, uh, you hear this sentence? Do you understand this sentence now? What does he want to say? Right. Right? He says, let, let me repeat this sentence again. Mere pita ne mujhe ek phuti kori nahi di. Right? Ek phuti kori nahi di. It could mean it did, my father did not give me a broken penny. It also means my father did not give me any money. It means my father did not give me anything. Right? Whichever meaning you like, you keep that meaning. But the point is, we cannot say, Mere pita ne mujhe ek phuti kori di. We cannot say that. If you want to say that, then it means the literal broken penny. It does not mean anything or it does not mean any money. It means a, a real example if this is something like a broken penny, bro, broken cell, then he did not give me that broken cell. Get the, get the point? Is that true, Siddhant? It, it, I am asking him because he is he, he speaks Hindi and it should make sense to, I, I, th I think, everybody, right? Making sense? You have already seen the example of Hargis. Now, you have the third example, which means, which is Mukholna, right? Mukholna literally means, this one, this one everyone should know. Mukholna means opening the mouth. It literally means Mukholna, but it means in the in the sense in the context of language it is generally assumed that when we open mouth we say something right it means speaking about something can you use this thing in a sentence again do you see this thing main moh nahi khol paya Right? Or we can say, Usne mu nahi khola. <coughs> right? Which means, he, did not he couldn't anything. say anything. Right? He could not say anything. Again, we can never say, Maine mu khola. Usne mu khola. Main Teacher ke, maine teacher ke saamne moh khola. Right? We cannot say these things with the meaning that I said something. Okay? If you say, maine moh khola, that means literally opening your mouth. It does not have the meaning of saying anything or saying something. The point is, the first three things that you see must strictly be used with negation in Hindi to give the meaning that we want from them. Can we add the emphatic marker B to the first three? Yeah, yeah, we can, we can add. But it still cannot. It become. still does not change much. It still retains its polarity meaning. And it cannot be used without a negation. No. No. Ask, ask Hindi speakers. It cannot be. Get the point? Is it possible that some of those expressions in other language uh, might not be a strict one? Belong to, maybe belong to group two. 
first of all these expressions will not be in other languages Actually, there is going to be an equivalent expression yeah, yeah, yeah. if that equivalent expression can be used without negation then they don't belong to this category then they belong to the second category i'm coming to the second category in a moment so there is a there is a strict classification one type which is going to be used only with negation and the other type which can be used without negation i have already shown you examples right so see any one of the examples in the second thing which is koi bhi kisi bhi kuch bhi ek bhi right these things will not can be used without negation and must be used with negation to give you appropriate negative polarity reading in other words again when you use the second the any one from the list of the second item on the screen then the sentence is not ungrammatical but it may not give you negative polarity reading for the first list we just cannot use them without negation get this one more point it's not just three of them i am just giving you three examples there could be hundreds of examples in any language so which answers your question that we do not have to have just these three or equivalent of these three what's important for us to see and understand that there is a set of these two available in all the languages if one does not and it's up to you to figure out can it be used without negation if it can be used then it belongs to the second category if it cannot be used it belongs to first category that's an important point okay that's just an observation okay now is this much clear to everybody since your friend sandeep asked a question about questions right so let me very briefly talk about this thing and if you have a question raise your hands and i'll answer this from the board i don't have it listed here these things but look at the second second set when these or or for that matter first set also when these things are allowed with negation right technically that is called licensing okay which means a negative polarity item is licensed meaning it is allowed it, the word licensing is just a fancy word doesn't mean much it simply means allowed and what does allow mean allowed means the sentence is good grammatical that's all if this if the sentence is not grammatical we mean not allowed not licensed so so please don't get lost in terminology it's it's very simple so we are saying a negation licenses a negative polarity item okay the first set for the first set we strictly need a negative item to license them for the second set we may not strictly need them right but what have you seen so far anything from the second set right when it is used without negation it doesn't give us negative polarity reading without negation that may be okay sentence but it doesn't give us negative polarity reading but there is one more distinction between the two categories anything from the second set can also give you negative polarity reading with question words okay the moment you question koi bhi right take koi bhi i can say koi bhi nahi aaya what does it mean nobody came it has a negative meaning nobody right i don't use negation i say koi aaya what does it mean no 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 without question koi aaya someone came 
you see this without negation it gives us the meaning of someone with negation it gives us the meaning of no one hey, hold on hold on hold on slow 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 hold on. what the distinction that we are trying to make is we when we get no one reading then it's a negative polarity item okay it can get someone meaning it can get the reading of someone without negation which is all right we, we don't debate that but it doesn't give the meaning of reading of no one without negation okay however under certain circumstances it can get the reading of no one when you question it how do we question this thing oh, yeah, yeah. The, the the sentence is let me let me give you this sentence koi aaya what does it mean raising intonation that's all right raising intonation is fine but this is a question everybody agrees when you when i say koi aaya is this question for everybody what's the meaning did anyone did anyone, did anyone come? come so no one or anyone these are the negative polarity reading so you can get a negative polarity reading with question also get this thing understand now someone can ask you this question when you study these things and someone can ask you just on the basis of one point you cannot make two categories right what is your basis can you give one more example one more theoretical point on the basis of which your categorization is okay do you see my question this is the second point that you can use which is you can get a negative polarity reading from the second set with question but you still don't get a negative polarity reading with question from the first set so you question the first set there is no negative polarity reading right so for example take the footy kori example mere pita ne mujhe ek footy kori nahi di what's the question aapke pita ne aapko ek footy kori di is that negative polarity reading no reading of negative polarity okay the point is the first set not only requires first the first set okay let me let me let me present to you in the following way the second set can get negative polarity reading under two circumstances one with negative word and the other with question first set can only get negative polarity items with negatives nothing else so that clearly justifies that there are two clear patterns in natural languages for negative polarity items okay and again some language may not give you two sets that may be debatable if a language does not have a clear distinction between these two sets right so in that case the categorization of negative polarity item may be a parametric affair okay but the presence of negative polarity item in natural language is a universal phenomena is a principled matter and now i can say is a the presence of negative polarity item in language is a matter of principle the presence of a negative item in a language is a matter of principle where how are parametric issues get it now before we stop i want to make one more one more point with this uh, i have already discussed this part with you where do where do negative item occur in the clause structure right there are different people like 
Pollock, Janotini, Mahajan, Dwivedi, many people have studied these things and people have had different positions about the presence of negative item in the clause structure. What sounds very convincing is, is a combination of all that, not, not any in particular. So, this is, the, this is the point that I want to make to you. So, how do we, we can say that a negative polarity item needs a negation, right? Needs a negation, that is true. But how, where does it need a negation? Right? Does all negation marker license negative polarity items? Okay? That's not, that does not happen and again we do not have enough time to give you, give you every single example to show you that. But uh, this will make sense to you because you have gone through that. The negation marker which licenses negative polarity item must be in the C commanding position. If the, neg if the negative marker C commands the negative polarity item, then it is licensing the negative polarity item. If it is unable to C command, then it will not license. Do you remember last time I gave you two types of negations? What were the two types of negation? Anybody? One was when the negation negates the entire sentence. Constituent negation and sentential negation. Sentential negation is when negation negates the whole sentence and constituent negation is when the negation negates only a particular constituent. From a constituent negative position, a negative polarity item cannot be licensed, which, is, which means in that case negative polarity item is not in the C commanding domain of the negative. Okay? Therefore, the NPI must be in the C commanding domain of negative polarity item as long as the negative C commands the negative polarity item, the sentence is okay. The interpretation of that item in an appropriate way is allowed. Get the point? So, I, I, I do not have the list, I just wanted to tell you this thing and this is the issue. How does it license? The answer is it must be in the C commanding domain. To understand the C commanding domain, let us look at the structure once again. The negation, okay, the C commanding condition for licensing of negative polarity item also becomes a motivating factor for negation being located in the functional domain. Only when negation is high enough in the structure, it can C command the elements downward. See, see my point? So, if the negation is located in the functional domain, it can C command all the positions that is subject position and object position both. So, if the negation is, negation occurs in the subject position, still it is C commanding. Remember this thing? How did C command? Because this, in that case we are assuming that the subject and NP originates at the specifier position of VP. Okay? The subject NP originates at the specifier position of VP. Under that situation, it is in the C commanding configuration. Okay? Under that situation, it is in the C commanding configuration. Can you, can you see this from this structure? If, if, uh, if we have a 
uh, BP V bar B. If you have the subject here and object here, right? Neg negation from here can see command this position. Okay? Can see command this position. It can also see command this position. All right? Therefore, negation being in the functional domain helps licensing configurations. Right? But there is a problem here. We know that this subject from the negation from the specifier of BP, what happens to this? It moves up for understand this thing? Now, do you see any implication of that? The subject becomes higher. Right? So, if someone asks you at this point, which one takes place first? Licensing of negative polarity item or movement of subject? Licensing of negative polarity item. Okay? Licensing of negative polarity item therefore, becomes an evidence for ordering of movement operations that only after licensing the element or only after being licensed by negation, if the need happens to be that way, subjects can move. See, movement of subject is for every sentence, but licensing is not related to every sentence. Licensing is related only in the sentence where you have a negative polarity item and a negative, polarity, negative word. When you have a negative word and a negative polarity item, then the licensing takes place first and then the movement of subject takes place. Okay? Therefore, C commanding domain is the licensing condition for this and the whole licensing condition itself is another evidence for allowing movement under certain circumstances. Get, get this point? when negative polarity item, when the element does not need to move, then there is no problem. For example, imagine you have a negative polarity item here. Instead of subject, we have it in object position. Then this one does not need to move right away. Right? However, if it is in the subject position like ek bhi larka, ek bhi, ek bhi larka nahi aya. Right? Ek bhi larka is in the subject position. Right? So, in a way, on the surface level, you have you have ek bhi here, ek bhi larka here on the surface position, nahi here and aya here. Then, if we allow subject to be here under spec of TP, then we know that spec of TP is not in the C commanding domain of negation then we need to say something else. But if we allow subjects originating here, then it is in the C commanding domain. And we have a convincing logic to say that before it moves for anything, the licensing has already taken place. So, to conclude this thing, can I say that the licensing takes place at a conceptual level, not at the surface level. Is this, this point making sense? The licensing that we are talking about for which we said C commanding domain is a requirement, this requirement of negative polarity item being in the C commanding domain of negation is a condition at a conceptual level. All right? Thus, I wanted you to see negation negative polarity items, licensing condition, 
with examples from our languages. However, it works the same way in all the languages. I have shown you with negation also how and how an element is a principal thing, how the same thing could be a parametric issue, how licensing is a principle and also at what level of, ab of abstraction does this licensing work. I, I do not think we can, we can bring a microscope to see that level of abstraction, the ones that I have been trying to show you through the examples of languages. Making sense? All right. So, we, we stop here with negation and negative polarity items, which are examples of South Asian languages from our languages. Think about Telugu, Tamil, Malayalam, Punjabi and other languages and for that matter English. To conclude with your question, things like anybody, anything are negative polarity items in English, which are of the second category. The first category will be something like at all, a word, like we can say in English, he did not say a word, right. A word has a negative polarity meaning because it does not mean literally one word. When someone says he did not say a word, what does he mean? Mo nahi khola, right, did not say a word. You can say the same thing without negation, he said a word, but it does not mean not saying anything. So, such elements are negative, strict type of negative polarity items in English, anybody, anything, anywhere are the second category of negative polarity items. Licensing works exactly the same way it works in Hindi. So, you saw the examples of Telugu and Hindi, that two way negation, negation classification works in Telugu and Hindi, right. Licensing works the same way. Now, English is a different type of language, SVO, still the licensing works the same way, you know why? Why licensing, why the same condition of C commanding domain is applicable on English too? Because the conceptual level that we are talking about, at that level all the languages are same, which is I language. The, the conceptual level of I language and E language, underlying structure and surface structure are the differences. So, we see the differences between Hindi and Telugu, Hindi and English, Telugu and English at surface level. At the abstract level, the universal principle work exactly the same way for all languages. This is licensing of negative polarity item is one such universal principle which does which no language violates. Get it? So, with this I stop. <coughs>